Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a jewelry store for all of your diamond armor buying needs. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please do remember to hit that like button as it really helps me and the channel out very, very much. And if you could try and watch as much of the video as you possibly can, that would be absolutely awesome. But without any further ado, let's get started. This is the amount of space required to make your store a 19 by 18 block area as represented by the white concrete grid on the ground, which I would always recommend making if you are planning out your world. It can only help. Here are all of the materials that we will need throughout the build. Please do make sure that you have access to all those materials and enough of them as well. And now that we have all of that stuff, we can get started. Step one, ladies and gentlemen, come all the way over to the front left hand corner of your grid, if you've made it. Begin by placing a grey concrete on the ground, with seven upside down smooth quartz stairs to the right of it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Place a grey concrete to the right, five upside down stairs behind, one, two, three, four, five. Then place two rows of smooth quartz, one, two. To the right of this, place a grey concrete. Destroy two rows in the ground and replace these with red concrete. On the opposite side, place a grey concrete with a smooth quartz block. Extend the smooth quartz forwards. But whilst we're here, extend the grey concretes up by two, one, two, one, two and then place a row of smooth quartz stairs across the top here. We may change this ever so slightly as we progress through the build, but we might, we're might. we also going to add some glass block, and we'll see how this looks when we actually put the door and the walls in. So this is going to be the entrance area for now, but we might augment it a little bit. We're going to place five upside down stairs, one, two, three, four, five, continuing on from where we just left off there on that tangent. Place a grey concrete on the end, with four upside down stairs going right, one, two, three, four, grey concrete on the end. Then place 17 smooth quartz. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. That should take you all the way along the grid, by the way. Which we then want to simply extend across and forwards. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is pretty much the layout or the ground area that we have. The floor plan, some might say, for the jewellery store. So, now that we have done that, we want to raise up the grey concrete areas, and we want to raise them all up by, I do believe it is five. So, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, I, I'm not sure that we have to do this on the front, but we will anyway. So, one, two, three, four, five, just because it gives you the height. One, two, three, four, five. And of course, last but not least, one, two, three, four, five here on the right side. So let's make the sides of the jewelry store first, and then we can progress onto the front where it's a bit more complicated. So we're going to start off by taking the top row of the grey concrete here, and we want to place this sequence of blocks extending backwards from the top of the grey concrete. We want to place a smooth quartz. Grey concrete, smooth quartz, grey concrete, smooth quartz, grey concrete, so on and so forth. I think that you guys get the pattern by now. We want to do this until we extend all the way back. Now, the last block of this should be a smooth quartz block, which you can see will then connect down to the back here. So, we're going to extend down all of these grey concretes here, either by one or two rows. My preference is one because I want them to be two rows high in total, these particular grey concretes, and I'm simply just going to fill all of this in between in using smooth quartz. So we'll have something which should look like that, which I'm quite happy with. Let's jump the gun a little bit and let's place a row of smooth quartz slabs all on top of this. This will come into play a little bit later on. The entire back of the build I'm simply going to make smooth quartz. There's not really 
anything else to this like it's just going to be smooth quartz there's no windows or anything like that on the back of the build you would imagine that a jewelry store would be quite secure so there's not really any particular details back here this is meant to be built into a street or a high street it's not really meant to have a back or anything like that there's really one way in and one way out and that area wants to be filled in using smooth quartz uh, blocks with slabs on top to attain the height that we have over there. We also want to have the same pattern that we have over there over here as well. So just in case, the reason that we do have the grey concrete on the side is just to create a little bit of a pattern, something a little bit nicer, is just in case you do want to, say, like have an alley or just in case you want to place this on the end of, uh, end of the street or something like that. So th that doesn't mean to say, by the way, that you can't add additional details to this, but the entire back side of the building is... Uh, what would be the word? It's kind of like display cabinets, so there's not really any room for any windows or anything such like that. But let's say that you did want to add a little something, you are more than welcome to, like, you're more than welcome to add a couple of rows of grey concrete, just at the back of the building like here, and you can add what I will call kind of like, I've been calling it like the zebra print. The only thing is that if you do apply it to the entire back of the building like this, you reach a point where, actually, no you won't, that's funny, I thought you would, never mind. So you'll just have something which should look like that. And then if you wanted to, you could add like smooth quartz slabs underneath, just like this. It almost reminds me of a piano as well, like zebra or a piano. I don't know why. It sort of reminds me of a zebra crossing, which is something we have in the UK. I'm not sure if you have that anywhere else, but um, if you place some of this in between, just if you do want to just make the building look a little bit, you know, a little bit more interesting, you know, I, I suppose that that certainly does do it a little bit. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with that, just in case you do want to add that little more level of detail. But once again, that might be futile depending upon where you put this in your city or, or your world, as a matter of fact. So um, we're definitely not going to have anything too much more than that, though. The only thing that we may possibly add is perhaps like a security side door. So um, we'll see about that in just a mo. So anyway, we now want to come all the way back to the front of the build now that we have done the sides there. And we want to make an area for a sign. So the sign is going to be made predominantly out of... Actually, th this might be the better way of doing it. If we start here on the right side, and you can see how we have the pattern of grey concrete, so you guys can see that. If we place smooth quartz in front of these two grey concretes here, and then place a row of grey concrete to the left, smooth quartz, grey concrete, smooth quartz, grey concrete, and then make the entire rest of the row going left, just make it all smooth quartz like this. And then we will be able to, like we maintain some of the pattern, which I think looks pretty cool, and we'll have enough room to write to jewelry. So um, I'm just gonna add some smooth quartz slabs above and below also we have to fill the windows in the win the windows aren't particularly difficult whatsoever we're just going to simply fill them in using glass pane these are anywhere with the, that we have the upside down stairs is pretty much where we uh, want to be placing the glass for the windows um, you can then fill in this using say like i mean we can even destroy behind this and then we'll just place some uh, smooth quartz behind this and up here as well. And we want to, as I mentioned, we want to have some more smooth quartz as well. So um, I'm going to add smooth quartz next to the door because we actually placed smooth quartz blocks here. And we'll extend these smooth quartz just a row forwards as well, just to kind of like add a door frame in. You, can you see how that sort of like looks framed now? And then if we were to add, I mean, it doesn't it doesn't really matter what like the ceiling material like. This is this is like a little walkway here into the store i think it's kind of like an interesting idea so um we could even have something like this and then we could add what would be the middle of this um it'd be so there's two rows here and there's two rows there so we could have something like this but then that's not the center of the window so maybe we'd simply just have that here like this 
And then we could even turn this gray as well because I don't, yeah, it wouldn't be getting in any sort of way here. So that's that's pretty cool. And then that'll keep like the inside of the store like a little bit brighter. We could even have like white glass or black glass as well, but we've actually got display units just here. So like directly behind these windows here, we're going to have like red concrete and then upside down smooth stairs. And then we're going to have glass pane and we'll have the same on the opposite side as well. So red concrete, smooth quartz stairs, glass pane, just like this. And those are just like two display uh, display units. Um, so we'll just have some of the more allure. Allu <laughs> Why can't I say this? Alluring? I was trying to say allure. Allure. Alluring. <laughs> English is my first language. Some more alluring pieces um, to kind of like get people to come and have a look in the jewelry store. But, um, you know, so we'll put some like diamonds and some emeralds or something there. Or maybe we'll just stock it full of gold. I'm not 100% sure what we'll put there. I mean, that's kind of up to you, really. But we, I'm sure that we'll figure it out along the way. So now that we've added the windows up here, I. <sighs> I guess we'll play smooth quartz around the top, top of the windows because I think it's a bit of a cleaner look, but it, I mean, it's not a big deal. What you, and Yeah, I guess, and then that also frames the grey concrete because you can actually see it from the outside, despite the fact that uh, that's kind of like this is where the top of the inside of the store is. I can't actually remember the material. I think I actually used, um, what, what are we going to be using? Oh, we could we could use some pillar quartz block. That uh, that'd actually be kind of cool. Maybe we can use some pillar quartz block or something like that. Um, anyway, so we also want to grab. We we're missing a few materials, but I, I promise you they'll all be in the item list. You should have them if if you did in fact collect all of the um, starting materials. But for some reason I don't have them, so I'm going to grab some yellow concrete and then either some chiseled quartz block or some uh, quartz bricks. One of the two of them. It doesn't really matter which one you do choose. And we also should have some smooth stone on us as well. So what this will allow us to do is using the smooth stone, we'll do this part first, we want to have smooth stone underneath the windows, unless you want to highlight the windows, in which case you can use some grey concrete, might look a little bit better, although it might also look weird, but I suppose it does frame things a little bit, and um, I keep using that term, like frame things, so what I mean by that is like it, it just sets some clear boundaries, so like the smooth stone looks, gives like an integrated look into the street, which is something that you might like, but the grey concrete, like, it's a bit more striking, so, I mean, yeah, we've got smooth stone, so just compare here. So you can see it, see which one you like a little bit more. I quite like the grey concrete because it, um, it just defines the windows a little bit better, in my opinion. So we can simply just place the smooth stone there. Yeah, it's looking pretty nice. I, I like that quite a bit. Uh, we have to make a ring. So the ring is simply made out of yellow concrete, which is meant to be gold. But, you know, I mean, you can use gold, but I don't like the uh, texture of gold. But anyway, we're going to place two yellow concretes here. They are basically just in the middle of this frame here. Um, we want to extend them up and outwards diagonally, each of them, and then up one. And then we want a diagonal, an upward row of two sea lanterns. So you can see we just want to have a ring right there. Um, the sign for jewellery, I'm not 100% sure whether I want to knock out like something like this. And then maybe place the banners individually. That You see, that's kind of like a cool idea. And it would add a little bit of a an interest to the, the front of the build. Like, we'll, we'll experiment a little bit, but I reckon that the jewellery sign is going to be right here. And I don't know why I keep over-enunciating the word jewellery. So, um, it's basically the width of the window, though. So, the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to dig out the centre of the store. And we're going to place a ceiling, and we're also going to place a floor as well. I want the floor to be an underneath, hmm. once again, like, it's a decision, like, I think that I'm going to place grey concrete underneath the uh, display units, I think that that will look a little bit better, maybe, but uh, I'm going to use red concrete for the floor, only reason being is because it's a rich colour, 
Like, it's a nice, rich colour. Like, a, a royal sort of a dark blue would also look nice as well. So... Um, yeah, it, either a red concrete or like a blue, I just like them. Maybe purple, but that might be a little bit too, eh, you know, a little bit too much. But I definitely like red for it. It just seems like the sort of colour that, that you would use as a flooring. You don't have to use concrete either. You can use wool if you like, because of course I'd, it is meant to emulate carpet. But um, also, if you wanted to, you could just use, like, you could even just... Keep it simple, like you could just use grey or something like that. Grey works everywhere, like a light grey, um, light grey anything. Or you could use, um, I did consider for some parts of this, like maybe getting some terracotta involved, but I didn't know if that was a bit too, a little bit too much. Like, I, I like the idea of it being kind of like a sort of classier sort of jewellery store, so kind of keeping it simple just like this um, might be the best way forward. Uh... For the ceiling, as I already mentioned, as we have almost done the floor here, for the ceiling, I am going to be using eeny, meeny, miny quartz bricks. We're going to use quartz bricks for the ceiling. So, or chis I like quartz bricks more for a floor material, so I think... Uh, okay, yeah, we're going to use chisel quartz block. Just put, no, no, no. We're going to use the quartz bricks. That's, that's what we're going to use. Um... I usually use this more as a floor material than a ceiling material, but I I do like it. I again, it's kind of like understated, like with the chiseled. Like I really like the pattern of chisel. Don't get me wrong, I think it looks good, but it's just might be a bit too much. Like once again, I'm not, I'm not trying to make this look like an insanely like fancy like jewelry store or something. Like fancy is the wrong word. Like I don't want it to look like. Like a trashy jewellery store. I, d I don't know how else to say it. But hopefully you know what I'm trying to say. Like I want it to be kind of like understated. I don't want it to to be like stand out too much. So we're just going to fill the ceiling with the bricks. I think that that's a little bit of a better option. And we're going to figure out. I mean what what's going to be above here. Because we do. We could just fill the top of this in. Because we already have the row of smooth quartz here. Maybe this will simply just be the ceiling material as well. Or we could add a row of I mean we could even knock this row out and then you'll see why why I might be doing this in a second like if we add a row of smooth quartz on the left and right there then we kind of like get an interesting sort of like if you ever look at the top of your building and then maybe what'd be good I mean andensite's fine I, I'm thinking maybe we'll use like stembrick slabs or we could even contrast with black but it's mostly just Maybe some poly maybe we will use polished blackstone slab because I mean black and white I mean they just go together so maybe this would look good just as the just as the ceiling and we we do need something up here because we do have the lights I mean you can see that we have like the what I'll call like the hallway light and um, we'll probably be adding some additional lights as well to the actual inside the store so I feel like I'm playing snake at the moment now for some weird reason so we just just going, uh, just going around in circles. But eventually, this will be done. Just going around, and we can focus on. We'll probably get the sign done actually, because that will be pretty much the entire outside, and the inside is actually relatively easy, ladies and gentlemen. It's not too difficult whatsoever. The most difficult challenge is figuring out what you want to fill the jewelry store with exactly. But I think that looks good. I'm, I'm quite happy. What? How did that happen? I'm quite happy with the result of that. I think that that looks pretty nice. So yeah, there we go. That's that's looking pretty good, if I do say so myself. So, next up, we're going to grab the loom and we're going to write jewellery. You guys know how I feel about the banners, so we're going to try and get them done nice and fast. Let's throw the loom on the ground and let's get the first banner in here. So, the first letter that we're going to be making is J. So, that's a vertical row of black on the right side with a horizontal row at the bottom. Boom, we have the letter J. Next would be E. We get to use this twice. So, that's a horizontal row of black 
through every single third of the banner with a vertical row of black on the left. Boom, E. So again, we get to use that twice. The next would be W. So we start with a triangle at the bottom of the banner. We throw out that black die. We throw the white die in there. We place the teeth. Hang on. Did we not apply the... I'm starting to think that we didn't apply the, the triangle. Hang on. So we apply the triangle. Grab the banner. Put it in there. Throw that out. White die in. And then we apply, like I call it, the bottom teeth. For it kind of looks like a little mountain. So we then grab that. Throw that in. White die out. Black die back in. And then vertical row on the right and the left. And there we have W. So then we would have another E. You can, if you're not in creative, feel free to make another E here. And then now, since we don't have to make another E, since we are on creative, we make an L. That's a vertical row of black on the left and a horizontal row across the bottom. So there we have L. Next, we need R, relatively easy. Horizontal row of black on the left. Or vertical row of black on the left. Horizontal row of black on the top. Diagonal row of black, top left corner to bottom right corner. Finally, we want to have a Y. So that is, we're already, that's already started off for us. We want a black row of top left corner to bottom right corner. Throw the black die out, throw the white die in. Make the bottom half of the banner white. Grab it, throw the white die out. Throw the black die in and place the opposite diagonal of black die. So there we go, we have jewelry. Missing one of these. So this will be placed quite, si so I think it might be cool to actually place it like here. So it's J E W E L R Y like this. And I like the idea that it's placed like this and that it's kind of almost got a 3D sort of effect. I think it looks a little bit better. It's up to you if you want to change it. So the next thing that we're going to do, because we can actually dump out all these materials, I don't think that we'll be needing them again, and we want to grab, I mean, we need we need quite a few things. Um, we'll need the black concrete, we'll need the pillar quartz block, we'll need sea lanterns, we'll need tripwire hooks, we'll need glass pane, probably glass as well, and we will also need, um, we'll need some other stuff, we'll grab these stairs, maybe even a lantern whilst we're at it, and let's head inside now. So, the first thing that I want to do is I want to make a couple of display cabinets. These are made by taking the white, or they're not white concrete, they're actually smooth quartz. The smooth quartz blocks area here, we leave a gap of two, one, two, and then place a grey concrete. This is on both sides. We extend these rows, one, two, one, two, and then we place a sea lantern in the middle, and then we wrap grey concrete around it, so extending outwards like this. Then, just to kind of like make a display unit, you can either place like, you can either use glass pane or you can use um, glass block. Glass pane looks a little bit more dainty. I, I'm not quite sure what word to say otherwise. And we can either hang lanterns on the ceiling like this and we can place say smooth quartz slabs around or maybe even black stone slabs. I'm gonna experiment a little bit. Black stone slabs. It's kind of cool. And that also breaks up the ceiling a little bit, which I like. And that kind of just really highlights these areas. So um, you can use smooth quartz if you like smooth quartz slab. You can use glass block if you like. But I quite like these as just little display units, little display cabinets. And speaking of which, there's actually quite a lot of them across the back of the build. So across the back of the build, we are going to be using a pillar quartz block and we're going to mark out a load of these units we're going to leave a gap of two pillar quartz gap of two pillar quartz gap of two pillar quartz you guys get the idea so that should you should be able to do that from going left to right and these rows of pillar quartz then want to get extended up to the ceiling every single one of them being careful to make sure that they are all pointing upwards they are quite an ornery block so <laughs> they uh you know they, they don't like being told what to do, very similar to stairs, so we've just got to make sure that they are, uh, they are all placed facing vertically. Uh, I'm going to place black, well, either, 
You see, we can use grey concrete, or we do have the option of using, say, like, blue or something. Because, as I mentioned, like, blue is kind of like a, a rich colour. Like, there's just something about it, like, you could use blue, and then we can place the upside down stairs in front of this. So you're not, you're not going to see much of it anyway, like this. And then we would be placing item frames on here, and then an additional shelf using... Um, using smooth quartz slabs. So the shelf is going to be placed here near the top, just like this. Perfect. And then I'm going to knock out just above each one of these cabinets and I'm going to place some sea lanterns inside here. So this will kind of just illuminate everything that is in the cabinet. And I'm going to add trip wire hooks to the middle middles of these cabinets, like this. And then later on, um, we would seal all of these up using the glass pane. So the tripwire hooks are meant to kind of look like um, locks or door handles or something of the like. Item frames in here and here. I mean, you could even play some like lockbox looking things to keep sword jewelry in. And um, basically, it's just a whole set of display units. Um, same thing. Well, not quite the same thing. Something similar here wants to be placed on the right. So we're going to use a mixture of grey concrete for this, so we want to place like, opposite where this smooth quartz is here, we want to place a couple of grey concretes, upside down smooth quartz stairs, again, block doesn't want to be told what to do, grey concrete on the end, join it back to the wall, this is going to be a big cabinet, and we're going to place a sea lantern here, and we'll just extend the cabinet all the way up to the ceiling, and we're going to, ex and we're going to place something, display something in here that's quite interesting, like we'll place like a whole suit of gold armor, or something, you know, crazy like that, something that's, you know, just something a bit silly, something, uh, something that outstanding, so... All the way over here, I and mean, we're, we're pretty much done for the most part. Like, we could even add, like, a shelf in here, say, if we wanted to. Uh, maybe even a couple of shelves if we did if we did want to, I suppose. And these could have um, certain items on them as well. On this back wall, we want to have a counter area. So, leaving a gap of two between the cabinets, we're going to place one, two, three grey concretes. And then I'm not sure whether to use, say, like either blackstone slab or upside down stairs and place one, two, three, four, five, six, leaving us three rows uh, away, and then a grey concrete on the end, and then kind of like almost join it back to this wall or just leave it. And then having, say, like a set of blackstone slabs across this back wall here. Oh, it wants to be one row higher. Because uh, I want to have like a, a set of safes or something like up here. Maybe with a couple of lanterns kind of like splitting them apart or, you know, something something like that. Just to make it look as though that, you know, we're not just recklessly leaving stuff on display in the jewelry store. Um, maybe a smooth quartz stair that can act like a cash register. Do we have any... Oh, we do have some way to pressure plates, but equally so, um, a light grey carpet would do as well. Um, I kind of want a display, like, behind the counter, maybe another display unit. So perhaps like a row of white concrete... Uh, blue concrete, sorry, around here with some glass pane around the edge of this. And we can have some watchers or something that we don't have displayed anywhere else. And we're quickly getting to the point where we need things like paintings and item frames and, you know, all of the other colourful blocks to kind of, like, progress along this point. I mean, the shulker boxes here, I mean, we can place shulker boxes and they, they look like little lock boxes or safes, of course, and they could even be placed here, like... If you've ever been to, like, a jewellery store or something similar, like, there's loads and loads of drawers and stuff everywhere, so this would be, um, you know, and they usually have multiples of some items, so um, we could have, you know, shulker boxes kind of, like, dotted about the place, like, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be out of place to have, like, say, one here and here or something like that. It's not a shulker box, is it? <laughs> but you guys get the idea. Oh, I cloned, I cloned the block, so grab this. You know, something like this. But then again, that's taking up more space from actual display jewelry. So, you know, it's it's kind of it's kind of up to you. But do we have the doors? Yep. Okay, so iron doors. We're gonna place weighted pressure plates here, and then this is how we get in and out of the jewelry store. Let's take a look at it from the outside because it should look quite good from the outside. Obviously, it's really going to come into play once we have actually 
uh, added all of the jewelry because that's that's what makes this place nice and colorful and interesting. Uh, you could add a side door if you were going for a um, if you were going for like a, a means of escape. Should anybody try and payday to this um, <laughs> uh, payday your uh, jewelry store uh, or Grand Theft Auto, it whatever. If anybody tries to you know get in the jewelry store, then you might want to perhaps just have like a one way exit. Uh, just to like escape the jewelry store if you wanted to just here left of the cabinets and then you could have an alleyway and you could even put dumpsters or bins or whatever you want to call them just along the way um, if you wanted to. I'm thinking that one lantern is enough up there and then we can place one on the end but ladies and gentlemen um, for this next part this is this is going to be kind of like you'll have seen in the item list hopefully that you're basically going to want to grab anything that you could possibly interpret as a jewelry store block. So I'm going to have loads of examples of these, but we're going to need to grab item frames, paintings, and just loads of different jewelry, jewelry looking sort of items. You, you'll see what I mean in a second. Okay, so primarily we are going to need some paintings and some item frames, but I've also grabbed a load of stuff that just sort of looks like things that you may consider like a jewel or a gemstone or something like that. And plus, we'll probably grab some different stuff as we progress through this as well. So, uh, I'm going to start off by placing paintings. I just want a couple of paintings um, in the jewelry store. Um, the paintings are going to be uh, specifically the two by ones. And I want preferably... Okay, so I'd like it if I could get like a pattern of, yeah, perfect. So Pinocchio, Man in White, and then Pinocchio again. They just look like, uh, they just look like advertisements for something like a particular piece of jewelry or something like that. I'm also realizing that I'm missing um, an armor stand. So the armor stand is going to be placed in this cabinet in particular here. And I'm going to fill it up with a set of armor. Just because it just it looks very lavish. I quite like it. And we can fill uh, and then we can just seal this up. It looks as though it's for sale. I mean you can even you can place like signs and stuff. Uh, listing prices and what have you. But we're going to have to place a load of item frames everywhere. So like in this window here we'll need item frames. On these sea lanterns we need item frames. Along here we need item frames. I realize I'm missing enough material. Um, along here we need item frames. In the cabinets we need item frames. So usually I would say like it's best to like have a couple of item frames that are missing just to make it look a little bit more realistic you know don't make it look as though that everything's completely like you know it, it it would just be a bit more realistic if it looked as though some things have been bought and what have you but I do think that it'd look a little bit cooler if we just completely filled up everything and it might even look better if we do arrange them in particular sets of items by the way so it you know and but oh, okay so first of all i'm gonna grab an end crystal and a never star so these i want to be in these particular cabinets so an end crystal here uh, or a never star i should say a never star here it just looks particularly fancy like these two display items like an end crystal it looks insane like it they just glow they've got something about them i really like that they're kind of like front and center in the store and then when it comes down to it uh it, it would be cool to like color match as well i suppose so um if we could say like obviously the gold nugget the gold ingots magma cream isn't so far away and then I was thinking maybe, because I, I don't have them on me, but maybe like the actual like blocks of gold as well. So like in this particular cabinet, you know, so like an all gold section. Um, in this particular cabinet, perhaps sort of like all bluey. So I guess that we could have like, I mean, we've got diamond blocks as well. Prisma and shards look like something. These crystals look like gems to me. Heart of the sea looks like perhaps like a big pearl or something. Um... Same sort of like with the slime ball, like it looks like some sort of emerald. I know that we have actual emeralds, but ender pearls as well, and eye of ender light, those all look like um, particular, like they, they just look like some sort of pearls or something. Um, emerald, we have, uh, what's that called? Shoot. That sort of look, I mean, it's sort of gemstone-y looking, isn't it? I mean, or at least it is to me. I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I might be wrong about that, but we can have like the block of emerald and emerald and we could, I mean, I guess we could even chuck diamond in there, but again, like that sort of looks like a, a particular gemstone. Uh, if we did want to, uh, 
span out a little bit. I mean, uh, it makes sense that we have, like... I mean, this sort of looks silvery, the iron. Um, so maybe we could have, like, iron ingot here. We could have an iron nugget. We could have fire charged nautilus shell. Like this, again, it looks like some sort of gemstone nautilus shell. Um, it get, it looks like just something sort of, like, fancy, really. I mean, maybe the nautilus shell is a little bit of a stretch, a little bit of a reach, perhaps, um, for it looking a little bit fancier. Um, I'd prefer not to repeat myself too much. So... Uh, I'm just scrolling through the materials, sort of like looking and thinking to myself, like, ah, what's what what sort of looks like um, some other some other like gemstony looking things, and you you might have a different perception of it as well. But I mean, I guess these sort of do as well, right? I mean, they kind of look like crystals or something like that, and e even to a lesser extent, like buttons sort of look like something like they look like tiny little uh, gems of of some sort to me or at least uh, the colorful ones so um you know they they you, you could imagine those to be anything like you could imagine those to be a ring or anything anything similar to that and i saw something else whilst i was down here uh, i'm not sure what i quite but oh of course like redstone dust sort of looks like something block of redstone as well um, you know, they, they also vaguely look uh, look like things as well, so, but, I, I mean, I get, there's no reason that we can't, um, we, that we can't, like, you know, repeat ourselves, by the way, I suppose, um, I also wanted to have, like, a little watch section, so, um, the clocks and the compasses, kind of like cool watches, they look like watches, one, one of them is literally a clock, so, you know, and the compass does look like a watch of, if you use your imagination a little bit, but, um, again, like, to fill in this front unit here, we need seven things, and, um, I suppose that, like, I like the diamond stuff a lot, like, I, I do happen to think that these, like, and I want to lump the colors together like these, I do think, where did I put a diamond block? I'm sure that I must have put a diamond block somewhere. Maybe I didn't, maybe I've got to grab it. I do happen to think that, like, diamond would be a particular good use of the window space. And not only that, I suppose that we could use, oh, I mean, you've got lapis lazuli as well, which is literally like a gemstone. Um, I mean, maybe even prismarine might look, uh, might look good too, so. I, again, I'm kind of like color matching, but... I mean, I'd, again, I'd, maybe, maybe if we mix a bit of gold in there, like, for the front window, it might actually look better to have some of the more precious stuff, so, like, literally the emerald, literally the gold block, um, you know, so, like that, and then maybe something like, and then even, yeah, maybe, like, the actual gold bar, the gold block here, and then an eye of ender or something like, or the pearl actually looks really cool. So, like a nice mix match might look a little bit better as well. So, you know, again, you're gonna have to sort of like figure this out for yourself. Like, oh, what looks good? What what's what's not? I actually, yeah, I do, I do sort of like a bit of a variety a little bit better, um, perhaps. And let's let's just try the fancier of the block. So here, here, block of gold, and then. There we go. I mean, obviously, they don't just sell one diamond ring at these places, you know. They don't just sell, like, one um, one gold ring. Um, we can have these here, so we can have this. And we can fill these, like, I imagine more so, like, watches would be here. So maybe, like, a clock here, watch here. Um, and then perhaps just, like, a couple of um, plant pots or something like that, just to kind of keep the, keep the place a little bit classy, something like that. Might look a little bit nice. Um, I'm pretty happy with. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, we could even add some more up here. We could add more item frames up here. You know, we could add um, once again, like I don't know, like a, an eye of Ender up here as well. You know, something like that. We could even have a couple of paintings back here. Although I don't think that I'm going to add that. But we do have to uh, seal up the units here. Um, Again, I'm sure that I've already said this a million times. I'm just trying to think if there's anything that I've missed, though. That you can swap these things. Like, if you don't think that these things look good in the frames, that's fair enough. Change, change up. If you want to change the color of the shelf, change the color of the shelf. You know, it's it's completely up to you. 
But uh, I think I'm pretty happy with the jewelry store right now. I might change some of the display cabinets, perhaps across the back, although I do like these first set of cabinets. Although I might even repeat or use uh, some fancier look at like this end one perhaps like this isn't too bad but this end run I might end up one I think I might put some red in here so just looks a little bit fancier I think that way but uh, I think that we've actually finished this build ladies and gentlemen so I'm going to be back in just a moment once I've cleaned things up and we can take a proper look at this so this is what your jewelry store will look like once it has been 100% fully completed. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this tutorial as much as I enjoyed designing and making it for you. If you did, please do remember to hit that like button as it really helps me and the channel out very, very much. If you're new around here, please do consider subscribing and clicking that little bell next to the subscription button. That'll ensure that you get all my videos sent directly to your sub box. And if you do want to make anything else by me, check out the card system, the description below, and the top of the comment section for the City Builds playlist. That is an awesome playlist with all sorts of other city-related builds that hopefully you'll really enjoy making if you haven't made them already. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I love you all very much. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Say goodbye, gold suit of armor. Goodbye!